The days of searching through countless articles, reading copious amounts of text, and then collating all of them just for the context that you need are all over. It's only been a year of generative AI, and we have seen an explosion of large language models, such as ChatGPT, Bard, Copilot, Cohere, Pi, Claude, and not to name all of the open source models that I can't even list. In fact, take a look at this research paper, which shows that the labor market will be impacted by large language models and large language models that have software and tooling built on top of them and jobs such as mine, a software engineer at Air New Zealand, have almost 50% of all their tasks automated. And I found this to be exactly the case. I've harnessed the power of these large language models for coding, documentation, research, understanding basic information, and web searching. However, throughout my year of AI research, GPT-4 has still remained the undisputed king. For those of you that are aware of this AI space, you would know of Google Gemini that got released on December the 7th, which claims to have beaten GPT-4 in almost all large language model benchmarks. However, the method that Google used to get 90% beating a human level expert is different compared to the one GPT-5 used. And these advanced prompting techniques are the ones that I'm going to teach you the ways to improve the accuracy. So this apples to orange comparison is not valid. And I will remain skeptical until I can get a release on and test these APIs out and see for myself if Gemini is better. However, it is not to say that the multimodality is not impressive. In fact, I cannot even imagine the use cases that would come out of code, text, video, audio, all combined together in a user interface. I will show you three key prompting techniques that utilize the power of large language models, how they work to improve their accuracy. The first method is called chain of thought, which helps break down the model into clear step-by-step -step instructions justifying how it got there. Think of this as the first principles way of explaining. Number two is few shot learning, which improves the accuracy by providing clear examples in the prompt and showing the model how you want the output to be. And number three is emotional prompts, shows that large language models comprehend emotional stimuli and phrases that invoke that can improve the accuracy. For now, we will stick with the undisputed king. Since the release of ChatGPT's web browsing, image generation, and advanced data analysis, I've completely eliminated my use for Google search. So the reason why GPT-4 is so powerful is because of the three advanced features on top of the sophisticated large language model. First is web search into Bing. So I asked the question, give me the latest update on Gemini. And it was able to summarize all the information. After reading it, I could verify that this was indeed correct. And then also provided links to where it got that. The second is Dali's image generation, visualizing a futuristic entity. Very impressive work. And then the third is finally the ability to embed images, documents, whatever. And so I uploaded the Gemini technical report, which it gave me a quick summary of, and then asked a particular question on how it achieved 90% on the particular MMLU benchmark which again goes through some interesting results and literally says here that it does chain of thought prompting and takes the best answers from that list, where GPT's four method was different. So right here, showcasing the three different capabilities of GPT-4, I would even question why anyone would use Google search when you've got something like this to acquire knowledge. But the true power of GPT-4 is in its latest updates, 
of what is called my GPTs. As you can see here, I've created specialized versions of ChatGPT. This is where you can use the advanced prompting techniques to embed into your GPTs and get the best output for the particular context that you need. So if I explore my different GPTs, you can see here, I'm a DevOps engineer at in New Zealand. So my most used one, as you can see within 16 different conversation threads, was the Azure DevOps engineer. This particular GPT is powered by GPT-4 and has browsing, data analysis, and DALI, all three of which I demonstrated before. I uh, simply ask it to create a multi-stage pipeline and give me the syntax that I need to deploy on various branches. And so right here, it's able to give me those particular easy requirements and provide a YAML structure which I can go off or iterate on my own. Furthermore, it gives me documentation to where this found, which was a key thing that I asked it to do. Awesome. My need for searching particular Stack Overflow syntaxes and going through various articles is no more when I can get very context-specific queries through my GPT. You can see the name, the description, and the instructions given here. And I can tell you right here that my productivity at work has doubled because of this GPT. I'm going to take you step by step of how I created this particular GPT. But furthermore, we are going to employ the three techniques that we found. So first, I wanted to know the best coffee spots based on the location. It then recommended Coffee Scout, which I loved. And then recommended a delicious image, which I love. And later, I asked it my particular requirements to only give me best soy cappuccinos and mochas, which it then configured. This was just the chat interactive, which all configured it correctly here. It provided the name, the description, and the instructions. But we, knowing our advanced prompting techniques, asked it to first use chain of thought. It should think step by step to make sure the location is open when I ask. Second, few shot learning. So this is an example of how it wants to be displayed. I said, give me the name, if it's open, the location, ratings, and a fun fact about it. The third technique is using emotional prompting, which states that coffee shops are very dear to my heart. It is also where I take my partner to spend quality time, so they have to be the best, which should improve its accuracy. It then provided some cool conversation starters. Do not need code interpreter. Do not need DALI, just needed to web browse. You can create actions, which is more of a technical uh, API version of this, but I haven't yet explored that yet. Maybe in a future video, if you stay tuned and subscribe. I'm then going to save this to only to me and we'll test the GPT out. So I tell it, I'm currently in Auckland City near the viaduct. Where can I get coffees? Why search for multiple articles when you have your own version of a GPT to do that? Hello there, coffee lover, in the friendly tone that I asked. Asked for Auckland City, gave me the name, asked the location, yes, gave me the ratings based on TripAdvisor, and the ambience and features. Everything that I loved, especially with a little taste at the end, enjoy your coffee adventure. So. Obviously right here, this is a very simple use case, a, a coffee finder, but you can imagine what you can do for any particular situation. So one underrated feature of GPT is the idea of plugins. And you can't really see this feature unless you turn on your beta. So if you go to the features and you turn on plugins, then using that, you will get access to hundreds of plugins based on third-party providers. This is essentially what GPTs do, but it provides things that don't currently exist. And so the two that I use the most powerful is Link Reader and Video Captions. 
but you can easily go to the plugin store and search through like i said 131 pages for the exact use case you need but i'm going to show you the two that i use so the first is article summarizer whenever i come across an article that is quite long takes me 10 15 minutes to read i simply chuck it in and get gpt to read the link which it then transcribes into the content and then provide me that simple summary and I do it all the time whenever I need to find out research for particular uh, articles that just are too much to read again this particular plugin is powerful the second is even more and it is YouTube summarizer so right here I've chucked in a link for a DevSecOps crash course just to see what is this course providing. Details me the exact chapters of this course and later I can decide, okay, I'm interested in this. I'll go and watch that. I don't want to completely take away the creative effort that this person put into YouTube, um, but I need to save time and know if this is worth watching. So this is an example. Another is ingesting two links for uh, smartwatches or fitness trackers. I provided the link to a scientific review for the Mi Band 6 and a scientific review for the Mi Band 8. I then asked it to collate the information that it learned in a table format so I can easily digest. Right here, time saves. And I do this for so many YouTube videos. There is an aspect of supporting the creator, but if I need to save time, I would do this. And you can even do it on my videos. I'm not here to gatekeep this knowledge. Like I said, I'm here to share it. So enjoy. If you don't want to watch my whole video, chuck it in. If you have GPT-4, plug in, get the summary you need. So another GPT that I created was a mechanic advisor for my car and so this one actually has a knowledge base when i go to it you can see that i have uploaded my invoice for two jobs that i had done with my mechanic so using this gpt i ask it to give me a summary of what i fixed on my car and the total cost and right there searching the knowledge base that i've uploaded knowing exactly the type of car that i want it is able to give me those in, that information and then later tell me that the grand total was an expensive one, but what isn't with the European cars these days? So this is an example of a, another, an AI agent for a particular use case. So here's my best use case of a GPT vision. I went to a tech conference where they were talking about AI and I took some photos of slides that I was interested in. I then later uploaded these uh, photos and asked it to give me some summaries based on the photos that it saw. And it actually extracted the information quite well. Furthermore, not only did it do photos from the slides, but handwritten notes that were taken on the day. And later, collating all of these together, I was able to tableize all the keynote speakers and create some documentation that would have otherwise taken me two hours to complete. Another GPT that I used just today was called Style Maestro. And so I wanted to know if the fit that I was wearing was up to scratch. So right here, I'm utilizing GPT-4's vision where I take a photo upload it to chat gpt and ask does this fit work do the colors complement and style maestro gives me the exact thing that i need telling me that i am refreshing and youthful that i have a casual and summary setting all great things um and i'm saying yep i am aiming for a summer casual look which then says what i am wearing is effective and indeed the colors are complementary do not want to be going outside with conflicting colors, so I'm grateful for that. It is surprising to me how GPT-4 has still remained the king, despite Google, all the AGI labs, 
all the open source efforts in the community still haven't reached the power and capability such as GPT-4. Just last month at the end, we witnessed a crazy AI succession level drama where OpenAI's Sam Altman got fired and then reinstated, completely changing the board without any clue as to why this all happened. That instability is interesting. And so we can't put all our eggs in one basket. Although what we will see in the coming years is that AGI labs or big tech giants will keep on competing and outcompeting each other and six month cycles. This is incredibly exciting for the consumer, but also scary because of the almost arms race like Oppenheimer moment that we are going with AI. However, what I have showcased through GPT-4 is a plethora of techniques, ways to use the features within the system to improve the way that you use large language models reduce the hallucinations and get exactly what you need. I envision a future where AI agents are everywhere, specific for each task. One for summarizing emails, one for generating code, one helping me with business, cooking, everything, all those GPTs that you saw, but specialized agents. However, one thing is for certain, large language models are the future and all future generations are gonna treat this as a native piece of technology that they just grow up with. It will be like our generation with the internet and Google search. So those that do not utilize and harness this power will be left out. Hopefully though, these tips and techniques have equipped you with the knowledge to get exactly what you need, explore this generative space, and really unlock the power of AI. My mission is to harness AI for humanity's benefit. And through these techniques, I hope that we are one step close. Please continue to follow my channel. Subscribe if you want more to come.